Hi. What's happening? It is Uncle Nick. And as promised, part two of the keg video. Now, the reason why I showed you how to pick the keg with the loading is because that all transfers into the clean and pressing as well. Your picks will generally be the same. Now, I do recommend picking with the staggered, where your one hand's on top, one hand's on the bottom, for just about all of these. I personally feel that it goes a little bit more fluidly when you pick that way. But I will leave that decision on how you want to pick the keg completely in your hands. I gave you my recommendation for what that's worth. But just like the loading, there are three clean and press techniques that I've seen the most of. I haven't really seen any other than those three to be completely honest. So if there is another way out there, I'm all ears, I'm down to learn new stuff. But the first way will be a one motion, the second way will be a lap and you kind of roll the cake up your body. The third way is more of a flip. We're gonna start with the first variation of this clean and press because I personally think that it ingrains the violent hip motion that you're gonna need throughout all three of these. You get a similar hip motion via the stone, kettlebells, even deadlift when your hips come through with the intention to break the bar in half. Your hips have to get moving on this. You have to have the violent hips to make all of these work. Any sort of clean and press, especially in the strongman world, whether it be the log, axle, kegs, you're gonna need violent hips. So that carries over not only in the keg clean and press, but just about everything you'll do when it comes to putting something over your head. So without further ado, let's get on to the first variation of the keg clean and press, and that is the one motion. The one motion clean and press. The keg starts on the ground, just like everything else does. I strongly recommend on this one you start with a staggered start, one hand on top, one hand on the bottom between your heels, tilted away from you at a 45 degree angle. What you're gonna do from that point on is you're gonna pick this keg up. Now you need to be violent off the ground because this is a one motion. So you need to build the momentum as much as you can from the point you start to the time you press it. What's gonna happen next? You'll notice that arm should be right up against your inner thigh groin area on the bottom, the one arm that is on the bottom of the keg. And what you're gonna do, your hips are gonna fire back and you're gonna fire forward as you're rowing that keg up off the ground. Then you're gonna snatch that keg up as it's rolling and it's gonna kind of flip once it hits your upper body. As it's hitting your upper body, you're jerking up with that top hand. You are firing that bottom elbow under so it, the keg kind of turns about 180 degrees and your hands wind up on the bottom and you're using that momentum that you've now generated off the floor through your hips to come up your body. You're using that momentum you've built to lock out the keg press. Now this one I feel like may take a little bit longer to learn because there's a lot going on and it's all happening essentially at once. It happens fast. It has to be fast. Speed kills. Speed kills in strongman, speed wins comps. Regardless of what you're doing, speed has to be there. Without speed, you have no power. Power and speed go hand in hand. Not talking strength, I'm talking power. Speed has to be there for the power to be engaged. It slows down, it is no longer power, it is strength. So your high side is going to end up being the side where your hand was on the bottom of the keg, and you're gonna notice the keg will be locked out some sort of angle like this, depending if you're right-handed or left-handed, it doesn't matter. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna constantly talk from a right-hand perspective, because if I try to think about a left-handed, I'm gonna have to step away from the camera and clean and press it left-handed to, yeah. So for y'all's sake, I'm always gonna be using a right-handed outlook on this, because that's how I press the cake. And by that I mean right hand being on the bottom of the cake, left hand being on the top. I know that sounded like a lot, rotating, spinning, whatever, but it is not. It is one fluid motion. It is gonna take repetition to ingrain that one motion clean and press into muscle memory. It looks like a lot, but I hope the slow motion and the video breakdown of me actually doing it helped you with that because it's kind of hard to put into words for me personally. I'm a visual learner. I'm not a verbal learner. I have to watch and pay attention to see how things are done. You can tell me how something's done until you're blue in the face. So when I explain things, I try to give you the verbal commands along with the visual because I don't know what type of learners you guys are. I'm sure they're all different types. That's about all I got for you on the one motion clean and press. We are going to move on to the lap position where you actually roll the keg up your body. So we are on to the second way to clean and press the keg. Now how you pick the keg on this really doesn't matter because it is gonna be horizontally in your lap as if you're going to load it. 
Where it gets tricky is the hand placement. We're gonna spend a little more time on the hand placement here because that is the part to me that was the hardest to figure out. Because depending on where your hands are, depend on where you press from. The best way to start and figure it out is try and get dead center on the top and keg, top and bottom of the keg after you've picked it. It's still gonna be staggered. One hand's gonna be high on the top of the keg, one hand's gonna be low on the bottom. Now, it doesn't matter which side of the keg you use. But by top and bottom, I mean top and bottom. Top, bottom. So my left hand will be on the bottom, my right hand will be on the top. Now what is going to happen here is the same motion you would have with a stone. I mean the exact same motion regarding your hips. Your hips come back and then your hips fire through. It is violent. You can get a lot more hips into this one because the keg is in close to your body and you get direct input from your hips to the keg. That is what is gonna initiate the big part of this clean and press. The hips are very important when it comes to cleaning a keg. I cannot emphasize enough how important your hips are because that is the deciding factor whether this is getting up or not. You've now lapped it, you're crushing it, you are mirroring top and bottom. If you go a little too far forward, a little too far back, you'll know because the keg will end up in a weird spot. The goal is to literally, as it flips up your body, your hands exchange positions. But you want them dead center again. So that's why I say start out dead center with your hand position on the high side and the low side of the keg. So now that you've lapped it, you're crushed, your, your hips are back, they're about to come straight forward from point A to point B, you're gonna rocket this keg up your body. Now what you're gonna do with your hands is you're gonna rip back on the high side of the keg and rip forward, drive forward like an uppercut. Pow! You're gonna drive forward with that bottom hand. So what that's gonna cause to do is the keg to flip 180 degrees. If you do not do this motion, the keg is just gonna land on your chest and you're not gonna have the clean to go with the clean and press. This is a violent motion. Get mad, get angry, turn on your anger song, whatever you need to do. Someone just kicked your dog. You're angry. I'd be angry. I'd be angry if someone kick someone else's dog. You're ripping up on this keg. Bottom hand, uppercutting, top hand, ripping back. What that's gonna do, it's gonna completely switch your grip 180 degrees. It's gonna roll. By the time it's on your chest, you should be 180 degrees. And now with that roll, you're immediately gonna start driving. You're gonna use that momentum that you've built off of your lap and your hips, and you're gonna take advantage of that, and you're gonna keep driving. Now, if need be, you can get it in a stable position on your shoulder to re-drive. At that point, the keg is supported by your body. Now, it's not gonna be comfortable because the bottom of the keg is gonna be digging into your shoulder and the side of it's gonna be on your head and you're gonna be like this. It's, it's not comfortable, especially when you get heavy. But the whole point is to get it to your shoulder and or overhead from that position. If you can get it here, I promise you're gonna be able to press it because it's literally like two inches more to lock out. You're gonna be like this. It's gonna be stupid easy to press. The hard part, in my opinion, is absolutely the clean with these kegs because the press is so short. But the clean, there's a long way to go with a round, smooth, slippery, cylindrical, circular, that's all I got. But remember, take note of what your hands are supposed to be doing. If your hips aren't working together with the ripping back motion and the uppercutting motion, then your elbows aren't gonna get around and get underneath the keg. It's literally like this. Your hands are doing two opposite direction circles. If you do not combine the hips with those, you're gonna get stuck somewhere in the middle and you're not gonna know what to do with yourself because you're gonna be putting the keg back on the ground and you're gonna be frustrated like I was when I was learning how to do this. There's a lot of moving parts with this cleaning stuff because you're, you're all over the place, rotating and flipping and doing all kinds of crazy shit like that. But now you're at the shoulder position. You couldn't press it with the same momentum, that's okay, that is fine. You are in a supported position. All you have to do is dip and drive just like you would on any other overhead press. That is gonna be the easiest part. Rebrace if you need to, do not completely exhale. Your breathing and bracing stays the same. You brace before you pick, you brace before you clean, and then if you have to stop at the shoulder, rebrace, make sure you get the press to lock out and you're golden. That is about it for the second variation of this. So let's keep on moving right to the third variation of the clean and press. For me, it is one of the most effective. We are now onto the third variation of the clean and press, which is more of a flip. 
It is something that I learned maybe a month or so before East Coast because I was originally doing it the second way I told you and the clean was taking a lot out of me. Now I did have the keg in a medley and the keg was the fourth implement in the medley, which the last implement I got to. So you weren't walking up to this thing fresh. So I decided to try something new to see how it worked. And yes, it was a little frustrating at first, but once I started getting it, it allowed me to get a 250 pound keg one motion from the lap position. Not from the floor, but the lap. And it made things a lot easier and a lot smoother and much more efficient. That's what we're aiming for here, efficiency. This third keg, you're going to want to pick the vertical way. By that I mean the first way I showed you on the load where you are staggered starting. One hand is out top, just like on the first pick I recommended in the first clean and press on this video. One hand is up top, away from you to 45, one hand is on the bottom. You're going to lap vertically, not horizontally, vertically, here. You're going to bring the bottom of that keg as close to you as possible. You're not gonna move that hand. That hand is gonna be right up against your hips in your lap position. The top hand is gonna be away from you. You're thinking, what am I gonna do from here? I don't know. You're gonna clean it. That's what you're gonna do, because that's what this video is about. Same hip motion as before, hips fire back. Remember, you're still crushing on this keg the whole time. You do not want it to leave contact of your body just like when you clean a log. The log rolls up your body. This keg is actually gonna flip up your body. It's gonna pivot right here on your shoulder. Your hips are now back. You're gonna fire them once again from point A to point B, viciously, with violence, with intention. Fire those hips through with a purpose. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna uppercut with that bottom hand. It's coming right off your hips. Everything from this clean is stemming from your hips, especially on this one. All your power from the uppercut that you're gonna get, the initial momentum you're building is coming straight out of your hips. It's gotta happen. You're firing your hips through. You're now uppercutting with that bottom hand and ripping the top of that keg back to you with that top hand. Make sure you do this all at the same time. As soon as your hips get through, start driving up with that bottom hand. In unison, ripping back with that top hand. Now what's gonna happen is that keg is going to pivot and flip right up onto your shoulder. Now, if you have enough momentum, you can one motion. If not, you're once again in a supported position on your shoulder and you can redrive right into the press. Some things I would avoid with this is getting that bottom hand too far around the side and the top hand too far around the side because it will transfer the way you pull and push on this keg. If you're too far to the sides, what's gonna happen is, is it's gonna try and rotate like this versus like this. If you're inputting hip drive one direction and ripping on the keg in a completely different direction, it doesn't go smoothly and you don't get the efficient input to power that you were looking for. So that's why I said this bottom hand is right up against your hip bone, whether if you're right-handed, your right hand's gonna be on the bottom. So my right hand is literally right pretty much up against my hip bone. And the bottom of the keg is actually gonna be crushing your fingers in between your leg and the keg. Top hand is gonna be kinda of away from you at that similar 45 degree angle because it's gonna pivot right here. And as the keg's swinging out the bottom, it's not swinging straight out, it's swinging kinda of at that 45. Imagine it just completely pivoting, 180 degrees. And it's going to pivot right here on the meat of your delt. And that's where it's gonna land. It's literally flipping right up on there. When I first saw it, it actually looked a little more complicated than what it actually was. But now it is another tool in my arsenal that I have to use when I need to use it. So recap on the third press. You're picking vertically, you're lapping. You're lapping vertically. Keg is this way, long ways, perpendicular to the ground. What you're gonna do at that point, you are going to fire your hips from point A to point B, boom. At that same time, you're driving up with that bottom hand and ripping back with that top hand. At that point, the keg is going to flip up on your shoulder and you're gonna keep driving into the press and if need be, redrive with your legs. Bracing's the same, brace before you pick, brace before you clean, and if you have to redrive at the top, brace before you press because sometimes things can get weird with all that weight on your shoulders. That is about it for the keg videos. This was the second out of two. I know there were a lot of you guys asking for the keg loading stuff, and I decided why not cover the clean and press along with it. So I hope this is what you're looking for. I hope these clips along with the instruction helped you guys. I broke it down the best way I knew how. I hope kegs are no longer an issue for those of you that said they were an issue or that you were new to them. Just keep working on it. Trust me, it will only get better. Also, 
On this video, I want some more questions for a Q&A. Ask anything you want. This weekend, I have obligations, so I will not be around to get a video out Saturday. I would love to have a Q&A out for you guys early next week. I'll answer as much as I can. I don't want to make it too long a video. The only thing I ask is if it's lifting related stuff, try not to make it too vague or too general so that it's hard to answer. Like, it's my first strongman competition. There's a max log, what should I open with? Man, I don't know. <laughs> I can't answer that stuff because I know nothing about your training. I know nothing about your strength level. Shoot me straight. That's all I'm asking, just shoot me straight. Get to the point. None of that general gray area vague stuff. Funny questions, lifting related, non-lifting related, and I will get to as many of those as I can to make it a reasonable length video. But until next time, guys, you know what the deal is. Get out there, get after it, and embrace the suck.